Mother's Day. So all the mothers out there, we celebrate you. May God continue to smile upon you, and I pray that you enjoy your day today. I want to give honor to my pastor, Bishop Thomas, Executive Pastor Elder Hughes, and Sunday School Superintendent Missionary Jacqueline Williams. If you would like to sow into this ministry or into this great church, know that you can do so via the Giveify app at St. Stephen's Cogis, C-O-G-I-C. We appreciate your contribution in advance and know that the Lord will bless you for your generosity. Our prayer today is like to pray God's word. Amen. He left us a model to pray in the Bible, and it is complete. Amen. So we're going to pray that together. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a wonderful Sunday School lesson today. It is Lesson 11. The topic is Peace and Justice Reign. Amen. If you have your Church of God in Christ Sunday School curriculum, you should have that out already. Um, if not, you can follow along, uh, as we've done before, uh, with your Bible, with your Bible app, and we will be using the King James Version translation. I wanted to just touch on the fact that the lessons, the last three lessons, or a couple of lessons, if you will, have dealt with, since April, have dealt with justice. We talked about how the Lord loved justice uh, in, in one lesson, and then we also talked about how he will punish injustice. In another lesson, last uh, week, we talked about a vision of restoration, which was still dealing with justice. And this topic today is that peace and justice reign. We will develop the lesson in the order as it is printed in your book. We will read the Bible basis, the Bible truth, the memory verse, like me for today's lesson, Bible learning, Bible application, and then the students' responses. We will also read all 15 verses in the lesson today. So let us begin. Amen. We will be coming from the Bible basis to Zechariah uh, chapter 8, verses 1 through 8, and then it skips 11 through 17. The Bible truth, the Lord is jealous for the worship of his people and longs to dwell with them in peace. Memory verse. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not, that's Zechariah 8 and 15. Like me for today's lesson. Sometimes people respond to evil conditions in the world with a sense of hopelessness, regret, and doom. Where can they find motivation for continuing? Where is the motivation to continue to go on? The prophet Zechariah delivers God's promise of a new world of peace and prosperity for God's people. Bible learning is that the presence of God brings peace and justice. To truly have peace and justice, we need God's presence. Amen. Bible application, Christians understand that embodying God's peaceful and just reign means telling the truth and being a just people. Our students' responses is believers will commit to being people known by their peace and love for justice. Let us read the scriptures, Zechariah 8, 1 through 8. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy. Ah. And I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Verse 4, thus saith the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. And every man with his staff in his hand for very age or advanced age. And the streets of the city shall be full of the boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Oh, this is a timely word. Verse 6, thus saith the Lord of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of 
host? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. Verse 8, And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Verses 11 through 17, But now I will not be unto the residue of this people in the former days. I will be how I was in the former days. This is what he's saying, saith the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their dew, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Judah, Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be what? Strong. Verse 14, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, and I repented not, meaning I relented not. So again have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye, every man, the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. 17, and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against the neighbor. And love no false oath for all these things that I hate, saith the Lord. Amen. So background on this passage and this book, Zechariah. Zechariah is the 11th book of the 12 minor prophets of the Bible. And we've discussed this for the last couple of lessons. And we know that minor doesn't mean that it's less or any, you know, it's less word or it's not significant. It means that it's a smaller book. Amen. He is a contemporary of Haggai, which was another minor prophet. In this particular passage, it had been more than 15 years since the Babylonian captivity, and the temple still was not rebuilt. The importance of the message that Zechariah had was even in the times of despair and discouragement, God is working out his plan. So you see how this, it's amazing how these lessons are right on time. Amen. Let me read an introduction, which is also in your book. It's under the encouraging of the remnant. It says, Zechariah's prophetic ministry begins in the summer of 520 B.C. in Jerusalem. In the years between the arrival of the first group of returning captives from Babylonia and the completion of the rebuilding of the temple, both Zechariah and Haggai prophesied about the situation in Jerusalem immediately after the Babylon captivity. Most of the city was still desolate. There was no temple. It had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. Everything around them was in ruin. The people found this situation too daunting. Could this land ever recover? Could the Lord ever return to Zion? Ezra tells us that soon after the remnant Jews arrived in Jerusalem, they embarked on the work of restoring the temple, starting with the altar. And that's in Ezra 3. Their, in their intention was to rebuild the temple as well, but their drive to work petered out. There were too many distractions, especially from the numerous enemies around them. The people had settled down in durable houses. Zechariah 4 talks about that. While the land, while the Lord's house remained what? In ruins. That's Haggai 1, 3 through 5. So Zechariah emerged to be one of the prophets speaking hope and encouragement to the people. Amen. I also want to talk about verse 1. Because people seem to have issues with this at times. I've heard different people talk about this. How can God be what? Jealous. Amen. So in that verse 1, it's talking about his jealousy towards his people. The Hebrew word is kana, spelled uh, Q-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, but pronounced kana. It is a title that's used exclusively for God, which focuses on his desire for exclusive relationship. Amen. It speaks to his intolerance of unfaithfulness. Isaiah 42 and 8 picks it up and says, I am the Lord. That is my name. I 
other gods. Because the Lord, their God, is a what? Jealous God. Amen. When they showed interest in other gods or started to follow the gods of the Gentiles, God's wrath was unleashed upon them. They already knew this. He said this to them in the commandments. Thou should have no other gods before me, no other idols, no carved or graved images. And they were severely punished. However, here we learn that God's jealousy, uh, this is why God is not like man. His jealousy compels him, what? To return to his people and bring them hope for the future. So we see that it is a pa passionate, caring relationship that caused the Lord to be jealous for his people. Mother's Day is a, is a prime example. We are jealous for our children, meaning we nurture, we rear them, we care for them, we want the best for them, amen. We won't give that title to somebody else. Ah, I am the mother of my children, amen. We are not like God because you know we're flawed, but we can use that example that we want to do right by them. We're in a nurturing, caring relationship. And this is what God wanted with his people and what he wants with us. Yes, he's jealous. You're not going to say he's God and then say somebody else is God as well. You're not going to say he healed my body, but then give the glory to somebody else. My God. So his jealousy is pure. We may not understand it, but I believe we can. Hallelujah. Because we will not give our title of mother or father to anybody else when we know we are doing right by, the, by our children. God won't give his title to anyone else when he knows that he is God. He is the creator. Amen. And he yearns for relationship with us. Hallelujah. So look, this time in this particular passage, and I'm still about this jealousy, God's wrath is directed not to his people, but to the surrounding nations who have what? Took advantage of <coughs> Judah when God punished her. It's something. I spoke to Mother Bird yesterday. She was teaching me this lesson, and I love it. It is something. She said how God can punish the punisher. He, in his divine will, had to punish Israel for what? Their disobedience. So the heathen nations surround them, he let them overtake them. But he was not going to let it in like that because he is just and pure. So the Babylonians were going to have their day as well. Amen. So this jealousy promises comfort to Jerusalem since it leads to the punishment of the nations, what? Oppressing her. As the people of God, he is jealous for our worship and is angry when those who seek to lead us astray or harm us. Hallelujah. So point one, because we'll try to glean three points today. I think we'll have enough time. Amen. God's blessings are both spiritual and natural. We got to get that. And that's covering verses four through six. We're talking about uh, the replenishing or the old and the young. And I wanted to bring that out because it was beautiful and a timely matter for us in regards to what we're going through. The Lord and the people will be faithful to the covenant between them. Uh, the Lord's faithfulness will be an assurance to the people that God will execute judgments in Israel's enemies on her behalf. That was dealing in the natural sense. But this is real life implications as well because of the Lord's presence in the city. So you got to understand the lack of the temple being built was that it was the lack of God's presence among the people. Amen. We need to understand that they had a responsibility to rebuild the temple because it represented what? Worship. So the lack of them doing that showed that they were distracted and they were not concerned about restoring God's presence. So uh, life will return in this chapter, he's saying, that life will return to an unbelievable normalcy. What a word for us today. There will be large, growing families in the city, for blessings always means fertility. Always mean what? Increase. Old men and women will sit in the streets peacefully while young boys and girls play in the same streets. If you don't pick this word up today, we are right now dealing with what? Quarantine, amen, and imposed kind of, you know, stay at home. But oh, God is gonna bless us. We will be in the streets again, rightly so, amen. We will be able to play again, hallelujah. And this is what Zachariah was telling them in their particular situation.
situation. Old men and women will sit in the streets peacefully while young boys and girls play in the same shoes. There will be no need, no need to be concerned about their health or safety. Peace will reign, huh? And people will live to a what? Old age once again, hallelujah. The mention of the extreme ends of human lifespan suggests that the entire population, not just one set, one group, hallelujah, not one age group or one race, but the entire population will enjoy an atmosphere of renewal and blessing. When the young and the old thrive, hallelujah, it shows the entire population is doing well. So look, God's blessings are both what? Spiritual and natural. Matthew 19 and 26 picks it up when, when Jesus told them, look, humanly speaking, it's impossible. But with God, everything, anything, all things are what? Possible. Hallelujah. Point two, we must be strong and be about our Father's business. That's what? Kingdom work. We got to be about his work. Hallelujah. Let's pick it up in verse 13. He was telling them what? Fear not, but let your hands be strong. They had a requirement to rebuild the temple. So don't be what? Discouraged. Don't be, you know, daunted by the task. We're thinking how we're going to, you know, get back to normalcy because, you know, things have changed in this world. But we are not to fear. We got to be still about our father's business. Amen. And I think about Galatians 6 and 9. It says, do not be weary. This is what Paul was telling him. In what? Well doing. New Living Translation says, at just the right time, at just the right time, we will what? Reap a harvest of blessing. Hallelujah. If we do not what? Give up. King James Version says, if we do what? Faint not. Hallelujah. So let me read. It says, things would change for Israel if they were what? About their father's business. So it says, look, it would change for Israel now that the temple is rebuilt and worship is what? Being restored. Hallelujah. The Lord is reversing the economics. Think about this lesson today with what we're going on. Woo! The Lord is reversing the economic depression that has made life difficult for the remnant. The people will do their farming in peace on fertile soil with great weather conditions. Economic growth will return and with it, prosperity and normality. Oh, we got to understand that God is concerned. Hallelujah. But we got to restore the worship. Ah, they had to restore the temple. Hallelujah. So that the worship would be restored. Hallelujah. Today, we got to restore the worship. Hallelujah. Yes, we're praying. Yes, we're seeking God. But we got to restore right living, right worship. We want justice in this land. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. But we got to restore it first, what? Individually with us. Hallelujah. So point two, we must be strong and be about our Father's business. And that is kingdom work. Amen. Point three, God is faithful. Yes, sir. However, we have responsibilities to him. This is bringing out verse 15, verses 15 through 17. Hallelujah. So he was saying to them, look, I'm going to remember you. When he was talking about, you know, I, I won't have a wrath like I had before. Why? Because their, their uh, previous uh, ancestors were what? Disobedient. So, you know, God's wrath doesn't last always. Amen. He is just and he is kind. It's his joy. Come what? In the morning. So he was telling them this. Yes, you've been in captivity. They were in captivity for 70 years. And now they were getting back to freedom, if you will. But they had failed still to restore the worship. So he was encouraging them through the prophet 
for fixing this are the things that ye shall do. Speak every man the truth to his neighbor. Hallelujah. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. So look, the people should, as a society, be truthful and trust to one another and just to one another. And seek to live in peace with one another. The Lord adds that the people should not devise evil against each other, nor should they love false oaths, for the Lord hates these things. Light on the word, which is also printed in your book, will bring this out even more. It says, the Lord has never let injustice go unpunished. You may, you may say it's being there, but he has never, hallelujah, let it go unpunished. But in this passage, we see that God seeks to bless his people and lavish his love upon them. But until then, God charges, we are charged, uh, his people to act in specific ways. We are to tell the truth to one another, act justly, and harbor no ill will, hallelujah, toward one another. No evil thoughts, no evil motives, no evil emotions, amen, toward one another. In addition, we are to love, no false oath. It's a call to quit lying to one another. In Ephesians 4.25, Apostle Paul picks it up. He just said in New Living Translation, stop telling lies. Hallelujah. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are what? All part of what? One body. Hallelujah. And then he says, in back in our book, it says, in all situations and circumstances of life, we are what? To conduct ourselves with honestly, with honesty and good intention for other people. This is imperative. For us as what? Christians. This is what marks us. Hallelujah. Yes, God's love marks us. But how we manifest that love. Hallelujah. How we obey him is a manifestation of that love in keeping peace and following peace with one another. I'm not going to say that it's going to be perfect all the time. But that is our motive. That is our approach in this world. Hallelujah. We are no longer practicing sin. So what are we practicing? Ah, the fruit of the spirit. Yeah, love, meekness, kindness. Amen. Not telling lies. Hallelujah. Not, you know, scheming to do things negative. You know, we don't have evil thoughts. We're thinking on things above. Hallelujah. This is what God has charged us with. And with this invokes what? Justice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I wanted to read also as well. It says, we are, well, let me back up. It says, God is with us. This is your student's response. Amen. God is with us, and he is what? In control. Hallelujah. So I said to ourselves, think. Think about it. Think to ourselves and calm down. And whatever we're going through during this pandemic, you know, the, the uncertainty, amen. If people even got anxiety now of going back, amen, where we were praying, Lord, bring us out. Now we're concerned about getting back, if you will, to normal, hallelujah. But calm down and remember, God is with us and God is in control. And better days, hallelujah, are ahead of us. Better days are ahead, amen. So God is with us and he is in control. This is the reality that we all need, amen, amen, to know that God is what? With us. We are in a covenant with the faithful God, not with a God, the faithful God, hallelujah, who can never break a promise. He will cause the sun to shine on us again and the dew to water our efforts, meaning we will have increase, hallelujah. There's a song that I love, you know, um, uh, the dew in the morning. Yeah. Simply what? Rest. Hallelujah. So he's going to cause that happen again. He will heal us from our sicknesses. Think about this. A timely word. Whew. And save us from the schemes of the enemy. However, he asks us to trust him with our very lives and obey.
obey his every word. That is our requirement. We are not living this life for ourselves. Amen. We're living this life as called, peculiar people of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When we take on that title, if you will, as Christians, it's not a fad. Huh? It ain't got nothing to do with what you think it got to do, but it got everything to do with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. His followers were about him. They were about his business. They were about, you know, changing the world. What? For the greater good of what? God. Amen. Which brings him what? Glory. Hallelujah. So peace and justice is promised to us. Can you not encouraged by that? You know, in a time where he said, we will be dancing again, playing in the streets. The old and the young will be together, meaning we will be on one accord. It was a great word for the people of Israel and Judah in this time. And it is a great word for us today to know that God, God is going to bring us peace and justice. Hallelujah. And when he does, it will be complete and it will be forever. There is a prayer, amen, that is in your book. And we will do in our normal manner to read it. I pray that you are encouraged today to know that peace and justice will come. Hallelujah. It will come. Amen. He said it and that settled it. Hallelujah. Let us read. Father, we thank you for the perpetual hope that you give us. You promise abundant life in so many ways. And for this, we are grateful. Help us to be a people who live into your promises and are filled with peace and a desire for justice. We pray that you will remind us every day of our status before you as your children whom you love. Thank you for your promises, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen.